Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Caitlin Croft, and I'm joined today by Zoe Steinkamp, who's going to be talking about getting better observability with open telemetry and InfluxDB. Please post any questions you may have in the chat or Zoom Q&A, and we'll answer them at the end. The session's being recorded. And without further ado, I'm going to hand things off to Ms. Zoe. All right, awesome. So today we're going to be going over how to gain better observability with open telemetry and InfluxDB. Uh, my name is Zoe Steinkamp. I'm a developer advocate here at Influx Data. Let's see, there we go. If you want to reach out to me on LinkedIn or add me, feel free. But basically, as a developer advocate, part of my job is to advocate not only for our company, but also for some of the other open source tech that we work in, like the Open Telemetry Project, as well as just in general to get feedback and such. So first things first. Our agenda. So we're going to first go over an introduction to open telemetry, which is going to include logs, traces, and metrics, an overview of the InfluxDB cloud powered by IOX. So that's the new version that we just released. We're going to go over a few of the key features that make it useful for open telemetry data. And finally, we have a project that you can actually pull from GitHub and follow along, or you can just kind of watch my slides. And then we're also going to do a live demo at the end of it. But basically, this will allow you to hook up Jaeger, Grafana, Hot Rod, which I'll go into later, but basically it creates traces, like it creates like fake traces. If you're like us, you don't have like a server to pull from and then Telegraph. And finally, more learning resources at the end. So first things first, an introduction to open telemetry. So logs, traces, and metrics. So logs are records or events or messages generated by applications or systems uh, during their execution. And one thing to note here is for the longest time, InfluxDB has been what we call a TSM, it's been like more of a time series metrics database. But now with our new IOX engine, we will be able to store logs and traces. Now the, um, the, um, the project that we're going to be going over later here it mainly focuses a lot more on the tracing side, but we will be also getting logs and metrics as well. So basically, uh, this is the, I guess you could say the circles of where these all come from, but metrics are more like, uh, ag ag sorry guys, aggradable events and logging is more like every type of events and tracing is request scoped. So that means that like, when somebody clicks a button on your website, you're more likely to get a trace about it, whether or not they got a 400 or a 200, you know, whether things went well or things went bad. Logging can still be that button press, but it's more likely to be um, just in general more, uh, what's the word? Like a trace can be uneven. It could take hours for another person to press that button. You know, it might not be consistent, but logs and metrics are normally a lot more consistent in that they are tracking constantly throughout the day. So these are the three big things that the open telemetry is currently working on tracking. And these are very, very important metrics, especially in things like deployments and DevOps. This is kind of a nice uh, architecture diagram of how this ends up looking. So I'll go over the key points of the open telemetry project in the next slide, but basically what they're trying to do is create everything in one space for you. So it used to be that it was kind of a play it yourself game of, hey, pick whatever you want to do your uh, your traces, um, your metrics and your logging and maybe some other stuff too while you're at it. And you can just use all of these different types of collectors and where you stored stuff. And it was very much everybody builds it how they want to build it, maybe by the tools they already knew or whatever tool was popular. But basically people were kind of spread out into the tech that they used for this. The idea with open telemetry is that you use one type of collector, which will grab all the three different types of data, and it's more streamlined. So you also know what data to expect because in open telemetry, they normally tend to define what parts of logs and traces and metrics are going to be storing. Now, that being said, you can store obviously larger amounts of data points if you have them. More things normally that go to things like uh, location-based data and such. But overall, what they're trying to do is just streamline this process because it can be very frustrating as a DevOps engineer to, I don't know, maybe change a job or when you change different possibly cloud providers or something, it can be frustrating to now have to use brand new tooling for all the same problems. 
that's not super fun. So the idea with the open telemetry project is it's all just wrapped up into this service. So it's a single vendor neutral collector binary and a vendor agnostic instrumentation library. So basically what these wonderful <laughs> words mean is that there are many different types of collector binaries and they're vendor agnostic. It doesn't really care if you store your data in InfluxDB or if you're storing it in something like a SQL database, uh, depending on what you're planning to do, it is relatively agnostic. The only big thing I would say is that the vendor neutral collector is technically accurate in that any vendor can create a collector like we have, but you do have to like follow their docs and stuff. So not every single uh, vendor is going to be is going to have an open telemetry collector just because they have to create it themselves. It's going to have end-to-end -end implementation to generate, emit, collect, process, and export. So that's like what I was talking about before. The whole idea here with open telemetry is that it starts from the beginning of that collection process all the way to storage. And it's all streamlined so you don't have to do it yourself to an extent. But it's still full control of your data with the ability to send to multiple destinations in parallel, like I was saying before. It doesn't care if you're sending it to Influx or to somewhere else, or as it is actually quite common to multiple places. Open standard semantic conventions. That's basically just saying that the vendors um, can easily build up the data collection agent. It's not necessarily difficult. It's just something that they have to do. And obviously a path forward, no matter where you are in your observability journey. So one thing to note is why I'm talking a lot about this is obviously this project is using an open telemetry collector that we built ourselves, but also because we've been working side by side with the open telemetry project for about, I want to say two-ish years now. It's been more intensely working together in the past six months, I would say, but we've been following the project and some of our engineers have been making commits and such for over the past year. So now we're going to go into an overview of InfluxDB Cloud. And this isn't gonna be like a, a massive overview or anything like that. Like I said, we're gonna be focusing on those key features that make it relevant for this type of data. So first things first, the new engine is built on top of Rust, Apache Arrow, Apache Parquet, Arrow Flight, and Data Fusion. So what these allow us to do is Apache Parquet is a Parquet file format and Apache Arrow allows us to be built with uh, SQL in mind. So the idea here is that we're storing files in that Parquet file and it allows us to be able to integrate with more connectors. And it also allows us to store in a more efficient file format. And with Aeroflight and Data Fusion, it allows us to uh, have SQL connectors. So going forward, you'll be able to call uh, InfluxDB instead of with Flux, you'll be able to call it with, sorry, you'll be able to query that call. You'll be able to query it with SQL. The calling feature is part of Aeroflight though. Those are, uh, I'll go into it when we get into the project. But basically these are the key technologies that the new engine is built on top of. And you can read a ton of blogs that go into, Paul especially loves to talk about why he built with all of these and all the features that they offer. So this is also our new architecture and deployment. So some of you guys probably haven't seen the, the old version of this, so that's okay. But basically the idea is that now your data sources, it's all timestamp data. So it doesn't matter, like I said, if it's a metric or if an event or a log or a trace, we can accept it all as long as it's still that timestamp data. The data collection is pretty much the same, I would say. It's mainly just Telegraph and the client libraries. Those are the big two. The client libraries are also being currently revamped because um, not all of them currently can do SQL querying, but going forward in the next couple of months, most of our top five will be able to, and I think in the next year, almost all of them will be able to. Finally, data storage and transformation. So this has kind of changed a bit. We've focused a lot more on the collection and the storage and then the SQL queries, which can't do quite as much yet as what Capacitor used to offer but we are planning to bring back certain features that Capacitor offered. And we're in general building out a lot more um, documentation and working on the data fusion library to allow our SQL queries to be able to do things like downsampling and such. And finally, data visualization and analysis. 
So this one, especially, we've been focusing a lot more on the integrations. So when I do visualizations in this project, I'll be showing you on the Jaeger UI as well as Grafana. So we focused a little bit less on our own visualization library because a lot of people just tend to use these outside tools. So unlimited cardinality is the first, I suppose you could say, big piece here. So what cardinality means is that back in the day, you would have, um, you'd have a trace or something. And a trace can be pretty large. It has approximately 30 to like 100 plus like uh, tags, you could call it on it, like data points on that value. So it would say things like where the trace came from. Uh, it might say even like the server it was going to. It would, it would just have a lot of information basically. And the problem with our old DB is that we would kind of max out at about 30 or so tags before things started to get a little hairy, I suppose you could say. But now we have unlimited cardinality, which allows, I'm calling it unlimited, but it's really up to about 200 tags, which is still a huge amount more and will encompass most data. Like it will deal with traces and logs perfectly fine. No problem whatsoever. So we've solved this cardinality problem where now you can have a much larger amount of fields and tags on your data source. So that means that you can have more, more data basically on it. You can have more things like locations or um, metadata, et cetera. So that was a big piece, obviously. The native SQL support. So I will say that SQL is not necessarily a requirement for dealing with open telemetry data. I'm just gonna put that forward. But SQL is really nice in that a lot of people like to use SQL. A lot of people, um, I'm not, I don't really like to say coding in it, but they do, for lack of a better term, they, they query with it, they code in it, they work with it a lot. And so this allows a lot more um, people to be able to use this platform and be able to query it back out. And actually a lot of integrations that we're working on, things like Power BI and Tableau, they expect the data to come back via a SQL. Like they expect to be able to query in SQL to get data out of DBs in general. So that's another key thing that will help in the future is that now that you can query with SQL, you will be able to integrate with more um, more features, more integrations, more vendors. <laughs> High performance data ingestion. So this has always been kind of the case, I would say actually, which is that we've always been pretty good at handling high writes and query loads, um, but it's gotten even better. And we're going to have in the next couple of months, a lot of data coming out about this, where we're um, showing off basically the capabilities of the new engine and where it, uh, we're gonna basically do a comparison of it versus the old one. So we can kind of show where it shines and how it's making things a lot faster. And in general, this is a good thing because again, open telemetry data tends to be a pretty high ingest rate. Like I said, uh, traces are not always necessarily a consistent metric, but logs and uh, logs and metrics are definitely very much like they're noisy. Like you're going to get them every single second kind of deal. And sometimes traces can be the same, especially on a very busy website. Seamless integration with observability tools. So this is also what I was kind of already talking about, which is the SQL allows us to integrate more, but we're also working on more integration. So this one is the one we're already talking about, open telemetry. And I would say that's the biggest integration that we're working with outside of um, Pandas and a few other data science tools that we're also working on. But we also have integrations with Grafana as well as I've, we, we work with tools like Jaeger but we don't necessarily have what I would consider a full integration. We don't work with them as closely, but we do work with, like, it's easy to work with the technology. So now I'm gonna go ahead and get into the project. So first things first, for those of you guys who want to grab it, and um, I would just grab it now. I, I'm trying to remember if it's linked at the end of this and I cannot recall. So I would grab this link now just to make life easy. But basically what this is, is a GitHub project where we are storing open telemetry data within InfluxDB. We're running this on a Docker server. So, uh, and as I said before, Hot Rod basically allows you to create um, traces, like fake, for lack of a better term, it creates fake traces for us to use. I'll kind of show how it works. And then after the open telemetry data is up into InfluxDB, we go ahead and show it off in the Jaeger UI. We'll also show it off in the Grafana UI as well. Parts of this can technically be replaced with Telegraph. And one thing to note is that we are currently in the process of getting our open telemetry collector on the 
official open telemetry collector list. Uh, we've been working on this for a while. It hasn't been necessarily the most straightforward thing, but our engineers are working out, I suppose you could say, the, the minor kinks of this, and then they're going to finally put it up on the open telemetry project. So as I mentioned before, Hot Rod basically creates, uh, as it calls it, rides on demand. It's creating traces and other such data. So basically what you do, and we'll see this when I actually pull the project up, but you basically click on these buttons at the top and it's creating traces for you. And the idea here is that these are different, uh, you know, like websites, different services. So you can uh, basically compare traces from multiple different sources. So Jaeger is where you can actually start to see these traces. So Jaeger is a completely uh, open source library that allows you to visualize trace data, for lack of a better term. And it also gives you some pretty awesome features like these kind of trees and such that can tell where your traces are coming from, where you're getting the most common amount, et cetera. I'm not going to go in depth on the Jaeger UI just because, honestly, it's just not my forte. But for those of you guys who want to check it out, obviously this project is using it and we will go over it briefly as well during the demo. But basically Jaeger is a super awesome open source library for trace uh, visualization. Grafana. So we also built our own Grafana dashboard for this project. Um, so with this, you'll be able to see, again, a lot of traces data. We also have a table or two, I think, dedicated to logs and metrics as well. But again, like I said before, this project does focus a little bit more heavy on the traces, but it's not a super big deal to just uh, start building out some Grafana dashboards about the logs and metrics as well. I would say, if, if anything, that's probably the, yeah, the very much straightforward thing to do. And we have a brand new uh, plugin with Grafana, actually, which will allow you to query in SQL. So that's a super uh, fun and exciting thing. And in the docs for this project, we talk about how you actually hook up with Grafana using our new uh, we call it the Flight SQL integration. And you'll also be able to see your data within InfluxDB Cloud. So this is where you're actually storing that data. So you go ahead and you, uh, for those of you guys who haven't actually checked out the, the new cloud product, you haven't seen this before. Basically what we're doing here is we're getting into our hotel bucket, which by the way is in the project with the uh, dashboard, sorry, the, um, the database is called, it's called a bucket and we called it hotel. From there, we're asking for the measurement of logs. You can see all the different um, measurement options that we have here. Again, this is all based on how open telemetry tends to like your data to be stored. And also I think we've done a little bit of uh, editing on our side as well. But basically you can see those results here in this table. So you can see all the logs that are available. And this, this is a very small screenshot of this, but basically these kind of, What's the word? You can like scroll right on this and you'll be able to see more data. Again, when we actually get into the demo, it'll kind of all wrap itself together. So this is a, uh, a very wordy slide that basically goes over everything inside of the readme for the project, but I'm just going to kind of walk us through this. So obviously you'll need an InfluxDB cloud account because that's where you, uh, that's where InfluxDB3 is currently living. You create two buckets, OTEL and OTEL archival. Now, one thing to note here is the OTEL archival is optional. You don't have to do that. Uh, basically, the idea with that is to show a cold storage option. So that one was supposed to have like a longer retention policy. Personally, I just do the OTEL bucket. You create an environment file with authentication credentials. You install Flight SQL as per the readme. So Flight SQL will be what allows you to uh, query your data. You build and run the Docker images as per the readme. You import your dashboard with uh, the JSON that we have provided inside the demo Grafana dashboards. So I've already done this in my project, but I'll show you guys in the readme. And basically from there, you can create your fake traces by clicking on a customer on the Hot Rod application. Uh, so Grafana setup details. So this is going to be best just read in the readme, but basically when you set up Grafana, because you're setting up a local host version of it, or sorry, an op open source local host version of Grafana, basically, just make sure when you set your credentials, you make them nice and easy because these are not public. And also when you go ahead, you'll want to import this dashboard. And again, this is best explained within the readme, but basically what you're going to be doing 
is you're going to pick the flight SQL integration that is now offered as well as uh, Jaeger as well. You're going to name it Open Telemetry, and then you're going to need to upload that JSON file. So let's go into the demo side, and we can kind of take a better look at this. And we're going to do some live coding. All right. So give it a second here. It's going to go ahead and get Docker up and running. Great. And you can see, obviously, we've got some Jaeger, some Grafana. Great. I'm going to move this Zoom thing out of my way. All right. So this is the project. Um, well, specifically, this is a this is a version of the project that my coworker built up. We have the uh, main one, which is forked from InfluxDB observability. But basically, what this does is this is the project that hopefully you're following. If not, now is a great time to grab that link. Uh, but basically, here it talks about the credentials inside the environment file that you're going to want to add. It's pretty straightforward. It's basically just your, um, I'll show this where you actually get this from, but basically it's within your URL inside of cloud. Your token, your organization, your bucket, and again, that archive bucket if you want it. And then finally, build the needed Docker images, which I've already done. That's why I only had to run the Docker compose file. And then finally, you'll be able to see Traces are generated by hot rod, browse to hot rod at the localhost 8080. Query the traces here. And um, Grafana is available on localhost 3000. So let's go ahead and check this out. So I'll probably have to refresh some of these because I'm almost certain they're, yeah, a little bit on the old side. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get Rachel's floral designs. We're gonna refresh all of these pages. So let's go ahead and find some traces here. So it's found us two traces. Awesome. We'll go back to Hot Rod and maybe get one more. And we've got three traces. I guess maybe it actually did keep my old trace. That's interesting. Uh, let's see. Let's see if on the front end what we can find. Yeah, like I said, this is not my per se forte. Let's see here. That's weird. I thought it would actually do it for me. Oh, there we go. But as you can see, we're getting some traces on the front end. A lot of them are going uh, currently through Redis and a few through MySQL. So this is a nice little system architecture here. You can also compare traces as well if you can uh, actually find them in here. Let's see. I don't want to, I don't necessarily want to deal with grabbing trace IDs and such. But basically, this is how the Jaeger UI will look once it's all up and running. It's pretty straightforward. For those of you guys who are a lot more comfortable using this, uh, I'm sure you guys know exactly how this would work and how you would want to find your data and such and sort through it. But let's go ahead and load into Grafana. Okay, let's see here. Yeah, there's my open telemetry one. Oh dear. Oh, oh. Looks like my data might be loading in a little bit. Give it a couple seconds. Looks like it might be having issues with the data source. Well, this is live coding for you guys. It was working 30 minutes ago. Of course, now it's not as happy. Um, but as you can see, we've got some of our traces down here. Yeah, I'm not quite sure why this is not finding its data. I'm gonna refresh this page one more time. You never know. Okay, maybe not. Sorry guys, I don't necessarily want to do a bunch of debugging while we're looking at this. But normally with this dashboard, you would be able to see all these wonderful graphs as I showed in the screenshot. I am trying to figure out why they are not working. Let's see if we change it to Jaeger if it's happier. No, that did not help at all. But yeah, so we can see our servants latency histogram and we can see the traces that we've already created. And we'll go ahead and create a few more traces while we're at it. Because yeah, I'm hoping that maybe eventually, I yeah, go ahead and reload it. But yeah, we're getting more traces, but unfortunately these are not loading in. I don't know if maybe I need to reload in my dashboard since I've restarted this now, but obviously my dashboard did reload in just fine. I'll take a look at this. 
it's it's probably me. It's probably less to do with the project and probably more to do with me doing something wrong, possibly. And then we'll go ahead and go to cloud. We're going to go ahead and log in here. Awesome. So in here, we should be able to view from my hotel bucket some of the data that I've got. Yeah, there we go. Go ahead and look at logs. And we can do things like by fields, like their attributes and their names. But for right now, we'll just go ahead and run with this. So as you can see, I have my logs here. I have quite a few rows of them, actually. And I'm only getting it for the past hours. These have all been created in roughly the past like five minutes or so. And as I was trying to say before, you can uh, scroll this over a bit. So you can see the trace ID that goes with the log. And this, this really can't be visualized. You have the option of visualization here. But uh, for example, this, this doesn't really work for visualization. We can see maybe if calls total, some might work. Yeah, no. Most of these are, um, I would say that most open telemetry data is a little bit more, uh, what's the word here, specific. And the uh, visualization libraries you're going to need to use for it. Things like Jaeger or Grafana are much better options than just the graphing that we option offer. Our graphing is more to make sure that you actually have data inside your DB, which I would say the table does a pretty good job of showing that, yes, clearly we have some data here. And yeah, it sucks that unfortunately our open telemetry is just not quite working as, as it was 20 minutes ago. Yeah, I think it, it wants to be on Grafana. I don't know why it's so upset. That's okay. <gasps> Yay, by me clicking on it, it worked. It didn't do anything. See guys, this is this is magical. So uh, yeah, so this is all of our services running. So you can see the scrolls quite a bit down because even in this past like two minutes, we've got quite a bit of services. See, if you just click around enough, you can fix everything. That's how this works, right? Well, maybe not everything. Well, now it's the same color field not found. I don't even know what that means. What do you mean color field not found? I don't know what this is. I do not think this was what I wanted, but that's okay. We'll we'll allow it. <laughs> Let's see if we can get this one fixed. It's kind of helping. It's funny in that I don't even necessarily apply things and it still manages to fix itself. No, no data found in response. I was hoping the traces of all things would work. Oh, well, I at least fixed two things by just screwing around with them. But yeah, I like I said, I'm not going to, this is just part of live coding is occasionally things don't quite work as expected. But again, over here, you will find that you can find the dashboard to import under this uh, file up here. So it's pretty straightforward. It's just this demo folder. And then Grafana. And from there, you'll be able to find all of the charts to grab. You can already tell that Docker is having an adverse effect on my computer. Um, if you would like to uh, access the trace node tree, then make sure it's enabled with the Jaeger data source, um, which as far as I know, I've done. The images are automatically built and pushed. Yes, that's right. So these images, this OTEL collector, it's automatically being built and pushed to Docker. Uh, you can check these two out if you want, but basically they're just talking about where the file is being held. And then this is talking more about the OTEL influx collector, which like I said, we're currently working on making this a more, um, what's the word, Wide, widely applicable, I guess is the right word for this. Like I said, eventually this collector and receiver are both going to be available on the OpenTelemetry project. We're just wrapping them up and putting a bow on them so they're all ready to go. Uh, the Jaeger query plugin for InfluxDB, which obviously enables querying traces stored um, via the Jaeger UI. And uh, if you want to go ahead and do some tests, you can also run those as well. So like I said before, this is a fork off this original project here done by one of our engineers, Jacob Marble, who has been working a lot on the hotel project. So you can also check this out as well. It goes, it, it builds the files a little bit differently, um, the way he's doing his authentication and such. Oh, speaking of which, actually, real quick. So here is where you get your URL. It's this piece of, of your URL. So you like US East is where I'm currently working out of. Uh, if you want to get your, your bucket ID, that is available right here. So that's your bucket ID. And then really quick, I'm going to see what the final 
piece was. I think it's just the token. Influx org. Okay, and token. So your organization is this one right here. Um, you can also find it within, let me see here. Uh, let's see, settings, orgs. So yeah, you can also find it in here. Sorry, I'm like looking for it, but basically you can find it in there or just grab it out of the URL. And then when it comes to the API tokens, you're going to want to generate them over here. Quick note, if you create an all access token, it gives somebody access to everything within the UI, or sorry, every, all of your buckets. Like it just gives them access to absolutely everything. Uh, so we do warn against doing this. Otherwise you can do a custom API token. So with that, you're gonna want to, like for example, the hotel one, do make sure that when you do this, you give your bucket both read and write permissions because otherwise we can't write the data in and you can't get it back out to send it onward to Grafana or Jaeger or anything like that. So just make sure that when you create your token, you give it both access. And yeah, as far as creating buckets, it's pretty straightforward. You just go over here and you give it, you know, a name like Hotel 2 or something. And then you put in your preferences for when it would be de uh, deleted. And then from there, you just create it. So it's, it's very straightforward. So really quick, I'm going to turn off uh, Docker just because it seems to mess sometimes with my slides. I'm going to turn this project off. There we go. I'm going to put that down at the bottom. Oh, so learning resources. So this is a try it yourself. So the Influx community is where that project lives. That's where the uh, observability, both observability projects live. The one that uh, Jacob created and the one that my coworker Jay created, which allows uh, that Grafana dashboarding. And then influxdata.com is obviously our main website. It's where you can sign up for the cloud account as well as just in general, find more information about us, the things we offer, what we're used for, et cetera. Further resources here. So that would be things like getting started, influxdata.com slash cloud, always a good start. Uh, the community forms in Slack are both places where you can come to us for questions and answers. Uh, our GitHub is, um, this is again, a link to the Influx community. In general, on GitHub, you can also find, obviously, all of the, our, our open source, all of other libraries, et cetera. Our book and documentation talk more about, you know, how to get stuff up and running, why we do what we do. Blogs are a great resource to see uh, new features that are coming up, as well as uh, user uh, use cases and such. Blogs like to talk about, like, what our customers are doing and such. And finally, InfluxDB University is a great learn-at-your-own paced resource that's completely free. So you can pick up a class there on something that you want to learn about and take your time doing it, and it's completely free. And that is the end of my presentation. So really quick, I'm just going to put us on that, uh, that QR code, and then we can go ahead and take some questions. All right, there we go. Perfect. And also, uh, Zoe, I threw in that GitHub link into the Zoom chat. So if you guys don't have your phone ready to scan it or you want it on your computer, the link is there. And also I threw in a link to an upcoming webinar uh, it's with, that I mentioned earlier. It's with Gary, our product manager. And so you can come and learn all, all things InfluxDB 3.0. I'm sure you guys have lots of questions around that. So, all right, now let's jump into the questions. Could open telemetry be a replacement or an, or an enhancement to my current telegraph setup? So they are not, they're not per se replacements or enhancements. So telegraph itself is an open source ingestion agent, which means it's pretty wide as to the use cases it can be used for versus the open telemetry collector that we're currently working on is just for the open telemetry project. So it focuses entirely on those traces, logs, and metrics. Now, uh, you can get that data with Telegraph, kind of like how it says here, parts of the collector could be replaced with Telegraph. They're not technically a part of the, Telegraph is not a part of the official hotel collector list, and I don't think it technically ever would be. Maybe one day it will. But so if you're using Telegraph for something, um, the open telemetry collector might just be the, might be the replacement if you're dealing with open telemetry data, but it would probably never necessarily be like an enhancement per se, if that makes sense. They're just different use cases for the most part. Regarding cardinality, what was the previous limit and what is the new limit for the same in InfluxDB 3.0? So uh, in previous, what the limit was is you could have, um, you could have a, basically it was based off the way that we queried our data back out. So 
normally you would have a timestamp, a value, a field, and a tag. So fields would be um, fields would be. I think fields are the one that you would run into problems specifically if you had a bunch of fields because we would we would query off those fields. So if you had like 30 plus fields attached to this value in this timestamp, the problem would be that the queries would be really slow because we were uh, querying them on the backside, basically. Like we were pre-querying them to take into effect that you had all these. I think tags, you could have a lot more because we weren't querying them in general, but that wasn't helpful then if you actually needed to query off the data. Like it's not helpful to just throw all your data basically in a tag and be like, okay, well, it's all tagged, but now I can't search via those tags. I needed this data in a field so I could actually search it back. So I could be like, I only want the location of my server in the Netherlands. I don't want all the server information from Sweden kind of deal. So now with the new limits, it's more like 200 rows. So now you can have like 200 fields basically. So, and I think nowadays when we, I still am learning a little bit more about how we redo our schemas nowadays, but basically it's less separated between fields and tags and more just in general timestamp value, everything else. And that everything else category can have over 200 values before things start to get a little hazy, I suppose you could say. And even then, I think you could push it. You could go above 200. I think it might just have some effect on the uh, queryability, that speed. Well, I Will IOTS and therefore support for open telemetry ever be added to InfluxDB OSS, we would like to use cloud, but have certain dev and production development use cases, which makes cloud un unattainable in about 10% of our deployments. So with that, uh, we are currently as a company as a whole, I would say we're figuring out what we're going to be doing as far as OSS with, with IOX. So with that, I can't really tell you, unfortunately, I do believe that uh, it will eventually reach open source, honestly, but when it comes to support for open telemetry, the open telemetry collector itself will be open sourced because that's what uh, that's what open telemetry is in general. It's all an open source project. Now, if the collector, and from what I understand, because the collector is just something that pushes data into Influx, it shouldn't have an issue where you could still use it for the OSS. Now, don't quote me on that. I'd have to actually go and test it and determine that that's the case. But in my mind, it makes sense that that shouldn't be an issue. Because the only issue that you currently might run into really between version three and the open source two is the fact that we have that SQL. And that's more of a problem when you're getting the data back out, less of a problem of the data in. And this OTEL collector is going to be, for the most part, all about streaming the data in. Obviously, we do also have the OTEL, um, what's the word? It's like receiver in the, the one that goes the opposite direction. And that'll have to be kind of figured out, basically. But Unfortunately, I don't have a great answer for this right now. We should have an answer, though, for this question and in general questions around open source in the next month or two, I would say. Yeah, I would definitely say keep an eye on our blogs and everything as we um, are continuing to roll out. We have a lot planned for the rest of this year as far as the rollout of all these new features. So I, <laughs> I know this sounds vague, but stay, stay tuned. Um, and what about... InfluxDB Enterprise on-prem version, will it have open telemetry support? I have absolutely no idea. I want to say hopefully, yes, it will, but I I, I know less about the on-prem on like plan for the engineering for on-premise, unfortunately. I'm not quite sure what will be added from Influx IOX. I know there's been definite talks about, yes, that IOX will basically be integrated on top of Enterprise to an extent, and so it will it will reap most of the benefits, I guess you could say. And so I think that's the hope is that on-prem enterprise will still receive a lot of these great benefits that IOX has to offer, including things obviously like open telemetry. What is the protocol used by open telemetry? Is it gRPC? Yes, it is. I actually, I have to admit, I have a second laptop here and I looked this up because I saw this question. So it says here, the specification Specification defines OTL is implemented over gRPC and HTTP 1.1 transports. Uh, you can go and check out their docs, which are quite large about the protocol details. Uh, that would be my suggestion. But yes, it does appear to be built over gRPC. What is the difference between AWS TimeStream and the InfluxDB? Um, so the big difference between us, and I do have to admit, I don't look at AWS time stream super often is that we do have a lot more, um, what's the word here? 
availability options, uh, features. There we go. That's the right word, features. We tend to have a little bit more features than time stream. And because we are more focused on being more friendly, I suppose you could say, to the open source community and environment, we tend to hook up to things a little bit better. Like we have a dedicated uh, Grafana uh, integration. We have dedicated uh, integrations with lots of different open source vendors and non-open source, obviously Grafana is a closed source too. And so that is one thing. And other thing is that we're actively, obviously working on this project. We wouldn't have IOX here today if we weren't actively working on things. And from what I understand, Timestream is a lot more of, for good or for worse, a consistent product. It's not necessarily being actively improved or doing lots of fun new things with it, but it stays consistent. Uh, that's the best I can do because I haven't, haven't looked at it recently. <laughs> And I will say this, you know, Amazon, they have so many products under their suite, under their umbrella, that it, it's always mind boggling to me personally when I look at AWS and realize all the new products that they've come out with. So obviously I'm biased towards InfluxDB and so is Zoe, but, um, you know, we like to say that InfluxDB is purpose built for time series data. That is all we do. All we do is work on our time series database and all the different components to the platform. So, um, you know, there's some, it, it takes a lot to build a database and we have an entire engineering team working on it. And there's, a, and I will say this, there's also other time series tools, uh, other tools out there that you can use time series for, but they weren't necessarily engineered for that. So it can't handle the really high ingestion that is natural with time series data, especially when you're starting off. And also we don't have any external dependencies. There's other time series tools out there that are built on top of um, Postgres and other platforms. So it just, it, it can slow it down a little bit. And on that, you know, someone just asked, how does InfluxDB compare with Prometheus? And Prometheus is great. I know a lot of people who love Prometheus as an observ observability or DevOps monitoring tool. However, it can't scale out. It, from what I've seen, it's really great for smaller scale projects. Um, Zoe, is there anything else you'd like to add to that question? So the big thing with us versus Prometheus is we also offer that cloud offering. And from what I understand, Prometheus has an enterprise offering, which can scale out quite well, but uh, that's I think that's more of like an on-prem solution for them. And then they have their open source, but they don't really yet have that middle in between where there's the cloud option. Is it possible to use Flux with InfluxDB IOX or do we need to switch to SQL? So this is my fault and I'm sorry guys for not saying this a little bit better. Here, let me go back here. So yes, we InfluxDB IOX also supports InfluxQL and Flux. We are taking backwards compatibility very seriously. We're actually currently working on InfluxQL with that backwards compatibility. Apparently the Flux wasn't such a big deal to do it, but InfluxQL is proving a little trickier, but our engineers are currently working on it. So yes, you can still use Flux if that's your preference. Um, the only thing that we're currently kind of working on is uh, if you're already using Flux, don't worry, don't be afraid, don't run away, but we are trying to have possibly newer users will rely a little bit more on the SQL. But yes, if you're using Flux, don't worry about it. You can still use it. Well, um, so so there's another question around this, Zoe. Um, does open telemetry replace telegraph for network observability or monitoring? Let me really like, one sec, I'm looking something up. So the answer is possibly. Uh, it, if you're currently using telegraph to get your network observability monitoring data, and obviously Telegraph has a lot of different options. Like you could be doing something like you're getting it from like, uh, I'm trying to remember the one Telegraph one, but like we have like ones that connect to like AWS and such where you can get all of your uh, cloud data as well as a few other integrations that we offer. Yes, it might be a replacement, but it might not be because do remember that the open telemetry um, collector and receiver and all that, that is within the open telemetry project. And although I think it's super great and the project's super great, just remember, it does mean that you're tying your horse to that open telemetry project and you're now within that ecosystem. And that might not be okay for your company or honestly, if you've already done the work and you like what Telegraph is doing for you, like Telegraph is working perfectly fine. Do not feel the need to like go make yourself extra work if Telegraph's doing what you need. Like that's, this is meant for people who always wanted this connector 
or are looking for this connector as they're building out their observability, uh, I'm going to call it platform, as they're building out their observability solution, they might be able to use this collector. But if you're perfectly content with what you have, don't worry about it. Can you talk a little bit more about the client library support for InfluxDB 3.0? We've already seen cases in the past where the client libraries for InfluxDB are moving to community-only support. So I can tell you right now, because I have this answer in my back pocket, is that we will be building Flight SQL support for Go, Python, C Sharp, Java, and JavaScript. Those are the five we are actively working on. The Python one and the Go one, I think, are actually both technically done. They're just being, I think, extra tested, basically. But those will always be supported by us, for sure. They're going forward into the future. We're working on them right now. And we would like to get all of our current 12 client libraries. Those five are the first ones to get done, especially the Python and Go ones. But after that, because they're the most, to be honest, they're the most popular, like we have the data to support that those are the ones people use the most. But after that, we are going to be looking at building out the other, uh, I guess we currently offer 12, so the other seven that we would currently be offering. And I think in all fairness, some of those client libraries aren't as straightforward as others. Like, uh, like some of them are not language specific. I'm trying to remember what they all are, but um, but yes, we are looking to support all of them. Will the InfluxDB ecosystem with Telegraph and Capacitor be updated as a whole? Um, Telegraph, to be honest, lives in its own world. <laughs> uh, Telegraph is, is always being updated because it's open source. And again, because I mean, the output agents are definitely being updated because they're being updated for SQL. Uh, or we're just making new ones as well, because it's one of those things where you can just keep creating output and input agents. Uh, Capacitor is in a state of flux, I suppose you could say. Um, and I have to admit, I don't really know the answer for that one. I think the team, you know, we, if people have been following along with the company for a while, you know that we've been really putting a lot of our engineering time and effort into making InfluxDB Cloud even more robust especially with the new storage engine, which we've called IOX and everything else. So I don't think capacitor has been worked on. It's still there, but it just hasn't been a focus of the team. How yeah, I would agree with that. Oh, sorry. Sorry, <laughs> Zoe. <laughs> that being said, you know, there's so many other ways that you can do real-time learning. Um, I, I wouldn't be too worried that um, there's plenty of other options out there. How can you monitor SMP devices with open telemetry? Uh, let me look this up really quick. I actually think we might have a might have an SMP telegraph plugin, weirdly enough. I think we do. I so know I know it's come up in the past. Yeah, so currently um, open telemetry doesn't have anything in particular about. SM, SNMP, um, there are some people who are writing blogs about how to do it though. Um, it looks like OpenTelemetry has a receiver that you can use for this. Uh, so that would probably be your best bet. Uh, I'm really quick looking something up here. I did throw in um, the SNMP um, agent protocol monitoring integration. So you- That's what I was about to say. Yeah, so that would be- that's a Telegraph plugin, and that would be a great way to do this. It doesn't really look like the Open Telemetry project is really focused um, on SNMP in particular. It looks like you can do it for sure because it's agnostic technically, so it can fit anywhere. But if you want something uh, that's a little more specific, I would check out the Telegraph SNMP agent uh, that is available. It's a bit of a mouthful having the N and M next to each other. I always miss one of the letters. Yeah, I when I searched it, I missed the end, but it still came up with what I wanted. But I was like, oh, I think there's an end missing here. <laughs> it's like neither of them are silent. Uh, okay, how do you, how would I use op open telemetry or sorry, how does open telemetry use telegraph on influx DB network while observability and monitoring functionalities? So just to clarify here, OpenTelemetry doesn't use Telegraph. They're not the same. Like I said, they're, 
you could see them as competing in, in the fact that they do similar things, but they one, neither one of them make any money. So they don't totally compete against anything, um, but they are not working together. The open telemetry collector might remind you a lot of telegraph collectors, to be honest, like that's kind of what it reminds me of at least. But telegraph is one normally more specific about the, the what's the word here? The, the product, the agent, the thing that it's worth, like the fact that we have a SM, SNMP agent in particular, that's all it does. It just collects data from that device. Or when you're monitoring your cloud stuff, it's specific to AWS, it's specific to GCP. It's very specific in what it works with. Now there's 300 plus plugins, so the options are quite large, but the OTEL collector is meant to work on anything. So that's meant to work whether you're a front end chocolate shop or your uh, AWS uh, server infrastructure, like it's meant to work at a large scale, on a small scale, on a front end versus a back end. They actually have a lot of architecture diagrams based on whether or not you're building out like a data science platform or a front end shopping platform. So they're a lot more agnostic in that way versus Telegraph, which is a lot more specific for what the plugin is going to do. And but but one thing they do share in common is they both define the type of data you're going to get back. So Telegraph normally tells you all the data points you're going to receive. And normally you can kind of edit it and say, like, I don't want these things or I want these things or whatever. Uh, Open Telemetry does a similar thing where it says, this is what you're going to get back for your chases, logs, and metrics. This is the this is the standard that we have set for you to receive this data. So in that way, they are similar. How does OTEL handle net flow data? Let's see. Let's see. Da, 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 da. Sorry, I'm looking it up on my other computer to see what we get. Uh, I love they it. don't They've... have anything. Uh, let's see. They don't have anything in particular for it. Um, again, I think because Open Telemetry is so broad in its use, they don't have anything in particular for NetFlow data. Um, So yeah, so also for those of you guys who don't know, NetFlow stands for Network Flow Data. So it's, uh, I mean, it's it's kind of similar, I suppose, in the um, logs and traces, but I don't think, I have to admit, I don't think the Open Telemetry project is necessarily for NetFlow data. I don't wanna say that though, because in all fairness, I don't work for Open Telemetry. Like I, I'm not, I'm very familiar with the project, don't get me wrong, but. I'm not a part of like their board meetings or anything. So I don't know necessarily what they're focused on use case wise, um, but I don't think that's really what they would be for. But you could you could explore a little bit further, maybe ask a question in their community and they might be able to get back to you. Awesome. Wow, well, that was a lot of questions for Zoe. So if anyone has any other questions, uh, we'll just keep everything open here for another minute. Um, Zoe, thank you for that awesome presentation and handling all those questions.